A new move to put more money in the pockets of the disabled in Delaware, and it's Lyme disease season. We'll talk about prevention. This is The Delaware Way. Welcome to The Delaware Way. I'm Larry Menti. If you have a disability and you live in Delaware, actually, if you live in Pennsylvania or South Jersey, it doesn't matter, you know that you can only save a certain amount of money, and when it goes over that amount, you can't get Medicaid. So you're limited on how much money you can have in your account. Well, that's all about the change, and leading the way could be Delaware. And one of the uh, representatives who is making a push to change that is Representative Trey Pardee III, who is a Democrat in the West Dover, the 29th District, which includes West Dover. And, and let's talk about the current regulations before we talk about how they could possibly change. Right now, if I'm a person living in Delaware with a disability, how much money can I have in assets? About $2,000. Well, that is if you want to qualify for certain benefits through Medicaid and through Social Security. And that has created a real conundrum for, for families who have children with disabilities because they want to save for their child. They want that child to be able to be self-supportive later in life. But there's this issue if, if they save too much money, then they will not qualify for certain benefits. So the ability to save, which most Americans have, is not afforded to people with disabilities simply because they have a disability. Well, that's, that's true. Uh, and so we want to empower these individuals, empower their families to be able to save for them. Um, and the purpose of this, this legislation and these types of accounts is to allow them to save in a more tax efficient way. So the creation of these accounts, they're going to be very much like the college 529 accounts or like a Roth IRA in the sense of how they are taxed. You're jumping ahead. You got to your legislation. Okay. Let's back up for one second. So the federal government ha is dealing with this now. They passed a bill in December that makes it possible for those with disabilities to save more money. Because in the past, what would happen is uh, parents or someone else would have to save the money so it didn't show up as an asset. That's, cha that's changing now at the federal level. The mandate now is for states to do the same thing. That's correct, Larry. When the legislation was passed in December at the federal level, it, it requires states to create their own plans. and much like the College 529 accounts, uh, the way I envision this and the way we are starting to see this unfold across the United States is states will partner up with a, a financial partner, uh, for instance, like a Fidelity or another mutual fund company uh, who will be the plan provider for this. So right now, the, no state ha has done this. Delaware could would be one of the first to do this. We would, but there are at least a dozen other states that are currently in the process of, of creating their own plans. Now, we are waiting for um, some more regulations to be finalized at the federal level. Um, we are, myself and Representative uh, Melanie George Smith, are currently working with Ken Simpler, the state treasurer, uh, to, to make sure that Delaware is ready uh, so that when the federal regulations are finalized, it will be able to roll a plan out. Now, you know, whenever something like this happens, people look at it and go, well, it sounds like a great idea. Is it going to cost me any money? Well, no. And that's, I mean, that's one of the, the beautiful things. The, these types of plans, and this is true of the College 529 uh, account, is there, are, there is a small fee that is built into the plan, uh, uh, typically in the neighborhood of about a quarter of percent. Uh, that, that will offset any administrative cost. So, so the idea is that this plan, much like the College 529 uh, accounts that are offered by the state of Delaware, will be a self-sufficient, self-sustaining plan. So it should not cost the Delaware taxpayers anything uh, to, get this, to get this plan up and running. So you wouldn't think there'd be any opposition, is there? No. Uh, matter of fact, uh, in the Delaware House of Representatives, it, it passed with, with a uh, uh, unanimously. All right, let's go back now. You started talking about the 529 plan. So if your legislation passes, and it sounds like you have bipartisan support, so it should, it, it sounds like it will pass. Yes, if you're a person with a disability, what does that open up to me now? So I go and start, uh, how much could I save? 
Uh, families can save up to $14,000 a year or a maximum of $350,000 in, in an individual's lifetime. And as I mentioned before, money that goes into this plan is going to be invested. It, typically, there'll be a, in these types of plans, there would be a, a uh, menu of different mutual fund choices. There would be some that are very, very conservative, some that maybe have a little bit more risk or a little more growth potential. But the idea, just like a Roth IRA or a College 529, is that money would grow on a tax-free basis. So when money's put into the plan, there's not an initial tax deduction. Um, there's no upfront tax benefit. But again, the money grows tax-free over time. And then when the individual wants to take distributions from the plan that could be used for, uh, for housing, it could be used to pay for medical equipment, actually a number of, of uh, uh, just uh, life expenses, that money will come out completely tax-free, growth and all. So give me a scenario, because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the type of people that this would help. And, and, and I'm seeing someone who, who is disabled, who might be in their 20s, and their parents are thinking to themselves, oh my God, what's going to happen when we pass away? Who's going to take care of my son or daughter when we pass away? And, and I, they can save money, but that would be, there would be an estate tax, would there not, in transferring some of that money. So you've got, you, you, there are financial problems with the way things are set up now that would be taken care of with this bill. Right, and, and most families who have a child with disabilities uh, do go through a number of steps working with an estate planning attorney to, to make sure that, that any assets that they do save for that child are, are done so in a, in a, in a, in a, in a smart way to, to try to avoid some of the pitfalls of estate taxes or, or other issues like that. Um, but again, this is just a, a way to encourage these families to save and uh, in a, again, in a more tax efficient manner. You know, and just trying to look, see it, to see if any po po possible loopholes or possible problems. Uh, can someone uh, avoid taxes by putting money into this for someone else? No, the, the money has to be used for quali uh, qualified expenses. Uh, it has to be used for the benefit of that child. And one of the things I did want to point out is that in order for an individual to qualify for this type of account, they would have to be uh, they would have to be disabled before the age of, of 26. Um, so it's not like somebody later in life um, in their 40s or 50s or beyond could suddenly claim that they are disabled and then try to take advantage of this account. This, these, the purpose of this legislation, the purpose of these types of accounts is to try to help families with children. And do you, you see, you see no problems. When do you think that this could possibly pass? When, because we're talking about, I guess, five percent of the people in Delaware that could take advantage of this program. That that's correct. So, uh, yeah, so we're looking at north of forty thousand families that that would possibly qualify for this. Um, I would be hopeful that perhaps as many as twenty thousand or more would would take advantage of this, and and I would I'm hopeful that we'll see this up and running in, in early two thousand sixteen. Okay, and let's hope that Delaware is the first state. And lives up to its name. I really that, that appreciate would be a great you coming thing. in. Thank you so hey, thank much. Thank you. I appreciate it. So when it passes, do me a favor and come back because we'd love to talk about it so that people that qualify, or qualify for it could specifically find out you know, where they have to go and how they're going to do it because I know some right. of the details are still being worked out. And if I could, I would just like to say a, a, a big thanks to Melanie George Smith, who is uh, another representative who is really uh, at the forefront of advocating uh, for people uh, with disabilities, and also to Rick and Amy Kosmowski and their daughter. Or Kayla, uh, who are really big advocates for Delaware um, for pe folks with disabilities. When you say her daughter Kayla, does her daughter Kayla have a disability? Uh, she does. She has Down syndrome, and in fact, this legislation is is named after Kayla. Oh, wonderful! So bring them all back. Yeah, it'd be when great. You come. All right, thanks a lot, Representative Trey Pardee, the third, a Democrat from West Dover, who is trying to make life a little bit easier for people with disabilities living in Delaware. When we come back, Lyme disease is a huge medical concern. We'll talk, it's this season, we'll talk more about that when the Delaware Way continues.